from quarantine. This is PSN News from home. It's Tuesday, December 1st. I'm Claire Vokey coming to you from Wilton, Connecticut. Here's what's going on at Penn State. There are 154 positive coronavirus cases reported in Center County since Friday, which is the highest single day increase in two months. 40 deaths have been reported in Center County in November alone, leaving the death total at 58 people. Since August 7th, Penn State has seen a total of 4,810 cases among the student body. As of Wednesday, 39 students are in some form of isolation or quarantine due to a positive test result or possible infected contact. Among University Park employees, there have been 35 active cases since the beginning of the semester, but now only six remain active. There are now over 4,200 hospitalized patients across Pennsylvania, 32 of which are in Center County. The Penn State Go app now has a new feature which gives users university updates based on which Penn State campus they are closest to. This includes news about campus safety, events, and coronavirus protocols. This feature is activated only when students enable their location services for the app. You can find more information on how to activate the feature on the app's website. Coming to you right now, our news anchor Max Kugler will deliver you the latest in national news. Thanks, Claire. I'm Max Kugler, coming to you from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Here's your national news update. There are over 1,400,000 reported coronavirus deaths across the globe. According to Johns Hopkins University, there are more than 100 and 38,000 new cases in the United States as of Sunday. Some are hopeful though, as the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine has started being flown to the United States from Belgium. The Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine are still awaiting FDA and other regulation approval. The metal monolith that went missing from Utah is now believed to have been found in Romania on Monday. Just yesterday, the monolith was reported to be gone from its original site, with no explanation as to how or why it even appeared in the first place. Hiker David Serber posted an Instagram video documenting the hollow aluminum monolith in its entirety. Serber gave detailed instructions on how to get to this rural area of the desert, and since his post, many adventure-seeking hikers have followed suit to find the puzzling structure that has now been removed. However, there leaves only speculation for the reasons behind its existence. Some believe it belongs to the late artist John McCracken, while others question if the 12-foot monolith is even from this planet. That was your news update. After your local weather, Colton Plislewski will bring you the latest in entertainment. From the students of Penn State Meteorology, here is your Penn State Campus Weather Service forecast. Good Tuesday evening, Penn State. I'm student meteorologist Christopher Tate here with your PSN forecast. Monday brought a pretty abrupt end weather-wise to a relatively calm weekend otherwise with lots of precipitation and even a little bit of lake effect snow across parts of the Commonwealth. I do think that will begin to taper off as we head into the afternoon and evening hours tonight and that'll be replaced by a high pressure system that'll take control over Commonwealth weather through the middle of this week. But then through the weekend, we'll have several near misses with several low pressure systems that could try to bring us a little bit of precipitation. Unfortunately, we do need some precipitation to alleviate some of the dry conditions we've had across parts of the Commonwealth. Here in State College, we're just abnormally dry. That means we're a little bit below average precipitation wise. We can see this lobe of severe drought extending from Williamsport up into uh, Tioga and Potter counties where much more rain is needed and unfortunately I don't think there's very much relief in store over the next several days. Through the morning hours of tomorrow some lake effect flurries could still linger mainly across the northwest plateau and along the northern tier but as we head through the day on Wednesday those will push off to the northeast and will be replaced by relatively quiet conditions. I'm expecting clear skies across the commonwealth overnight Wednesday night but then this low pressure system out over the plains could bring some clouds to the area as uh, the high pressure system will help to usher those into central Pennsylvania during the day tomorrow. So Thursday I'll call it partly to mostly cloudy, kind of a mixed bag if you will, but any precipitation should be confined along and south of the turnpike and into West Virginia and along the Appalachians, maybe even some isolated mixed precipitation in far eastern 
Ohio. Now, as we look at the upper air pattern through the end of this week into the weekend, a very unsettled pattern as we see this large trough setting up over much of the eastern half of the U.S. And then through the day on Saturday, that trough becomes more pronounced. And as it begins to tilt towards the northeast, I think we could see another low pressure system develop somewhere in the mid-Atlantic states and slide northeastward. And that could bring some clouds and maybe a little bit of precipitation down in the Philly metro. But here in State College, I don't think we'll see anything except a handful of clouds. And we're certainly used to that this time of year. Through the day, Sunday into Monday, we'll switch to a northwest flow. That's the infamous lake effect snow direction. And I think we will see some lake effect precipitation here in the Commonwealth to start next week. Now, as we back things back up to Saturday, here's that low pressure system I was talking about developing. By Saturday evening, could be a very well-defined low. Notice that comma shape, something meteorologists look for to find a very mature low pressure system. But I think only parts of coastal New England could see any real precipitation out of this outside of Pennsylvania, especially. I think we'll just be left with clouds. And then, like I said, on Monday, we'll switch to that northwest flow, and that'll give us some lake effect precipitation, mainly in the form of snow across the northwest plateau and along parts of the Laurel Highlands. Overnight tonight for your low 30 degrees, a fairly quiet evening. Otherwise, lake effect snow tapering off. Wind chills will be down around 20 because we'll have that west southwest wind around 10 to 15 miles an hour, gusting as high as 25. So pack an extra layer if you're going to be out and about tonight. Then during the day tomorrow, 39 degrees for your high, a touch below where we should be for this time of year. Clouds clearing during the day, cloudy to start, then mostly clear by nightfall. Winds are still going to be out of the west, but the gusts will wane ever so slightly and will do so to a greater extent overnight Wednesday into Thursday. Thursday itself should be a fairly average day. High temperatures just a couple degrees above where we should be this time of year. Low temperatures for this entire period will be right around average, which is right around the 30 degree mark. I think we'll be within spitting distance of that every day in this seven day forecast. Sunday into Monday, that's when we see that uh, northwest flow begin to take hold. And Monday into Tuesday, a high pressure system will come back into Pennsylvania. Northwest flow combined with that will help to knock temperatures back several degrees below where we should be for this time of year. And I bet that will last through the middle of next week. For the Penn State Campus Weather Service, I'm student meteorologist Christopher Tate. Have a great night. Thanks for joining us. I'm Colton Plazuski coming to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Here is the latest in entertainment news. Main Street Detour's debut EP, This Can't End Well, is now available after releasing the project on Friday. The pop punk band is based out of Penn State Beaver. Their new EP contains seven songs taking influence from bands such as Green Day, Blink-182, and Psalm 41. It is considered by the band to be a melting pot of music. Main Street Detour primarily played cover songs at smaller venues, including Penn State Beaver, and members include Shane Siepel, Sam Slavinsky, Jackson Glenn, and Dan Falk. This Can't End Well is available on Spotify and takes just over 20 minutes to listen to. Check it out, Penn State. The new Grammy nominee results came with mixed reviews from the public. The Weeknd was considered a frontrunner for many of the top awards, but he received zero nominations. Justin Bieber's album, Changes, received the nomination for Best Pop Vocal Album, which left the artist confused because he believes his album should be viewed as a R&B project. Despite the confusion of what it was, Bieber is flattered nevertheless. On a positive note, for the first time in Grammy history, every nominee in the Best Rock Performance category is female-led, including pop rock band Haim. And that was your entertainment update. Let's throw it over to PSN News Sports anchor Carlos Garcia, who has a story on Penn State football's first win of the season. Thanks, Colton. I'm Carlos Garcia coming to you from Miami, Florida. Here is your latest in sports. After five weeks of defeat and what looked to be a hopeless season, Penn State is finally in the win column after defeating the Michigan Wolverines on Saturday, 27-17. The Nittany Lions had a huge day on the ground, led by running back Kavion Lee's 134 yards and a touchdown. Quarterbacks Sean Clifford and Will Levis each added a TD on the ground as well. The team looks to continue their winning ways as they face off against Rutgers this weekend in their second to last game of the season. Of all the professional sports leagues in the country, the NFL seems to be the one that's been impacted the most by the coronavirus. 
a Thanksgiving matchup between the Ravens and Steelers was postponed three times due to positive tests in the Ravens organization, the most notable one being the 2019 MVP Lamar Jackson. The Denver Broncos pulled up practice squad wide receiver Kendall Hinton and started him at quarterback on Sunday versus the Saints. All three of Denver's QBs were ruled ineligible due to them being quote unquote high risk after coming in contact with a teammate who tested positive. Lastly, the San Francisco 49ers were forced to move their next two home games to Arizona after Santa Clara County, the home of Levi Stadium, issued a temporary ban on all sports. That was your sports update. This week, PSN News interview anchor Kaylee Grill had an exclusive interview with Dean Marie Harden, the Dean of the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications, about the future of the College of Communications and the upcoming media center. Take a look. Hello and welcome back to PSN TV. I'm Kaylee Grill and today I have the pleasure of sitting down with Marie Hardin, the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications Dean. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ms. Hardin. Kaylee, I'm glad to be here. So can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with the College of Communications? Yeah, so I joined Penn State way back in 2003 as a journalism professor. So um, I sort of, my, my higher education career, most of it has been spent here at Penn State. Before that, I was a practicing journalist. I worked a little bit in public relations. Um, I, you can tell from my accent, I'm not from the Northeast. I grew up in Texas and lived for a while in Georgia and finished my PhD at the University of Georgia. And that's also where I worked as a journalist um, before coming to Penn State. Awesome, so what was your experience like getting able to, being able to meet Donald Belisario and ultimately choosing to name the school after him? Yeah, um, he is uh, such a wonderful and um, visionary uh, uh, creative person. Um, you know, he grew up in um, Western Pennsylvania in the coal mining town. Um, and uh, just uh, had a lot of um, experiences there as a young boy during World War II that really influenced him, um, had um, you know, two loving parents. He learned a lot from his, his parents about the value of hard work. Um, and then um, you know, he came to Penn State, uh, had a terrific run here at Penn State, um, and uh, then launched a career, successful careers, um, not just, we think of him as a film and television, uh, you know, a great person in film and television, but he also worked in advertising for a while. Um, so he really, his career sort of spans a lot of different areas in the college. Um, it was, uh, he's also an incredibly generous person and the gift that he gave us uh, has really taken the college to a whole new level. And so it's, it was an honor um, to, to have the college name for him. Definitely an honor for me as a student being a part of the College of Communications. So COVID-19 has had a very big impact on Penn State. How has it specifically impacted the College of Communications and what protocols have been set in place this past semester? Yeah, that's a great question because of course, um, safety, the safety of our students and our faculty and staff is, is foremost uh, as we, uh, you know, as we immerse our students in the learning experience. So, um, you know, as a college, you know, we of course implemented all of the protocols that the university asked us to in the classroom, but also as a college, we really needed to think about the protocols for a lot of the student organizations that we work very closely with. Um, including PSN TV, but there are other student organizations too. Um, uh, Center County Report, um, you know, we also work closely with the Daily Collegian. Uh, we have other student organizations, Com Agency, for instance, Com Radio, lots of these different student organizations. We wanted to work very closely with those organizations to make sure they had the protocols in place to be able to do the work that they do. Um, you know, the, probably the biggest impact, though, for us of COVID has been the, um, the change in the timeline for opening our new media center. Um, so that's been delayed a bit, uh, you know. Um, on one hand, it's, it's, you know, I'm sorry to see it delayed. On the other hand, we couldn't, we couldn't maximize its use anyway, if it were open right now. So very true. So although um, COVID-19 leaves us with many restrictions, as you mentioned, there are some exciting reno renovations on the horizon for the College of Communications. So can you tell us a little bit about the new media center and what it's going to look like 
as well as the timeline for completion that can be expected. Yeah, I'm always happy to talk about the Media Center. It's on uh, something I'm thinking about and we're thinking about every day. So the Media Center will be in um, what is currently called Old Willard Hall. Uh, so it's right across the street from Carnegie. Uh, there'll be space in there for our students to hang out, to use the conference rooms, to uh, to attend classes, to um, to do the creative work that our students are fantastic at doing in the studios, uh, in the teaming rooms, in the labs, the newsroom. So um, the what will be happening is in the spring semester, we're going to open that media center in phases. The media center, I've, I go over there uh, every few weeks and take a look around at the construction. It's wonderful to see how it's coming along. It will get finished early spring semester and then we'll be slowly kind of opening it in phases. What that means for our students is all the, thing, all of the things happening out at Innovation Park in the spring semester will be continuing there and we'll kind of slowly be moving things over to the media center. Wow, that's super exciting. And it's very exciting for PSN TV actually, because we look forward to our brand new studio. So I'm super excited for that. Um, can you share some insight on some other things and what you anticipate the future of the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications to look like? Yeah, um, it's so exciting to think about our future because we are, um, you know, we're a comprehensive college in terms of the experience and the uh, and the preparation that we give students who want to enter the creative communications industries. So whether it's film production or um, whether it's public relations or advertising, those traditional sorts of, of careers or careers that we, we're not even, you know, they haven't been invented yet, right? Um, our students will be leading the way on that. I would tell you that as I see out into our future, obviously the media center will be a big sort of hub for all of our activity. Um, we are more and more as a college really becoming a also a hub of activity for entrepreneurship and for innovation. So what I would tell you is more and more, I think you're going to see innovation um, and entrepreneurship uh, really at the center of, of what we do and what our students do. This creative freedom to really combine technologies and creativity in in completely new and exciting ways. That's awesome. It's safe to say there's some very exciting things on the horizon for the Penn State community, as well as prospective students. Thank you so much, Ms. Harden, for joining us on this week's episode of PSN TV. I'm Kaylee Grill signing off, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care. And that's all for tonight on PSN News from home. Be sure to check us out on Twitter and Facebook at PSN News, on Instagram at Penn State Network News, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash PSN News. Have a good night and stay safe, Penn State.